welcome MA3 community. With this video, we want to introduce the new version V2 of our Color Picker plugin. This comes with several enhancements and uh, new features like our split color system, which allows you to get, for example, some even odd looks with your fixtures and a new sweep control section. After the setup process, you get this color grid that you already know from our previous version, but also a second layout with new control elements uh, for the different features. With the color grid, you can do basically two different things. The first one is that you can for sure set your active main color for your fixtures according to your individual fixture groups. And as a second thing, you can select an FX or bump color with this bottom row. This is used for our split color system, but you can also further use it in your show file as we are creating some special presets uh, in the background of the show file every time you're selecting a color in here. During the setup process of our color picker plugin, you can define a starting point in your color preset pool, in my case 9001, where the plugin automatically generates new presets and updates them as soon as I select my colors. As you can see here, this also uh, applies for the main colors, but also, as I mentioned, for this special FX color. So you can use those color presets down there for your further elements of your show file, for example, for color bumps or other FX. Apart from our main function of the color grid, you can now also utilize our new split color function in here with those elements on the right side. By clicking them, you can activate the selected color split for your corresponding fixture group and also toggle between the different states of a split look. At the moment, there are four different looks that you can use here. A left to right look, up and down look, an odd even on the x-axis, as you already know, and also an odd and even on the y-axis, uh, which is basically an uh, up and down look if you only have two uh, trusses aligned uh, along your y-axis. That is why it looks the same here. When working with our split colors, I want to uh, mention two other points. The first one is that if you want to deactivate your split colors for your individual uh, fixtures, you can simply use an off key or off command to deactivate them for a single uh, fixture group and if you want to deactivate them globally you can also use this off switch down here. The second point is that you can also work with our split colors on executor keys or faders. So if I open a playback section here I can use my assign key or assign command to assign this uh, split a sequence to this executor. And after this is done, I can also give it a go here and work with my split look. And this also uh, dynamically adjusts to the look that you've selected down here in our control section for the color picker. After we've taken a closer look at the split colors, let's continue with the sweep function. To use the sweep function, you can first set a direction of your color sweep down there and then uh, select a corresponding delay time. Without a delay, for sure, you won't see any sweep. So in my case, I will select a delay of one second and a fade time of one second two. And if I then select a new color, for example, for my spots, I will get this beautiful sweep as you can see uh, up here. For the direction of your color sweeps, you can work with those buttons down here. And you can also uh, click them multiple times to invert the direction that is currently selected. At the moment, we have four different sweep types uh, with a one directional sweep and another sweep type, which is there for a two dimensional sweep uh, along the X and Y axis at the same time. This normally only looks good if you really have a pixel arrangement or a grid of fixtures and not just a linear uh, setup like with those spots up here. So for sure uh, we can uh, utilize this on our spots, but it's yeah nothing special, quite similar 
to this one. But if we, for example, uh, activate our icons, we should see a difference here and get a sweep from the inside to the outside when working with this two-dimensional sweep. To deactivate all sweeps, simply use this off button down there. Before we come to the setup process of our color picker, I want to explain the timing behavior a bit more in detail. By default, you can select the timing both for fade and delay down here with our buttons. The fade time, however, can also always be adjusted using an MA3 timing master in the background of the show file, for example, with an executor to be more precise or flexible here. So let me show this real quick. I switch back to my playback section and if I now select uh, a new um, timing master here, we will find a timing master with the name MBL color timing. And this is the one you want to select. And after that, it is possible to select your uh, global fade time for the color picker using this executor. And as you can see, this is also linked to our uh, buttons, so you can also uh, work with a combination here. For those of you who don't like the idea of a separate color timing master, you can bypass it by clicking this exec button. After this is done, the color timing will only react to your executor time. As you can see, I've set it to zero, and if I switch my colors, uh, up here we won't get any fade timing even if i have my color timing at one here but if i raise my uh, executor time again i will get the correct timing behavior unfortunately we haven't found a flexible solution with timing masters for delay timing and therefore introduced this uh, little uh, custom button where you can enter a new delay timing value in seconds for example, if you want to achieve a longer delay timing or some specific value. For the second half of this video, I want to focus on the installation and setup process of our plugin. And therefore, I have already deleted all color picker elements or items and uninstalled our plugin in this file. The first step before importing the plugin is to prepare your USB drive and download our files. After the purchase, you can download a zipped folder from your download area and directly unzip it without any password protection because your download area is already password protected. Make sure that after the unzip process, you get a folder like this, which directly contains our main plugin data. This folder should now be copied to your plugin folder of the MA3 folder structure on your USB drive. So make sure to navigate to GranMA3 Grandma 3 library, data pools, and plugins. Now you can simply place it in here, and I will delete those elements uh, in advance, just to show you that it's working fine with only this folder. In the next step, you can now select a free plugin pool item, go to edit, use the import function, switch to your corresponding USB drive, and select our color picker plugin. Make sure here that you always ignore those crazy entries with the interesting naming at the beginning. Hit import, close this dialog, and you're done. Now you're good to go for the setup process. Before hitting the plugin, make sure that you've set up your color presets as you like, and also your fixture groups. For the fixture groups, always keep in mind that you correctly place them in the selection grid if you want to work with our split looks and our delay sweeps. Whenever you are happy with your presets and groups, click the plugin and start with our setup dialog. With the first four entries, you can specify your color presets and groups. In my case, I have a total color preset count of nine color presets, so I will enter a nine here, and they start from color preset pool ID number one. As a second, uh, I will enter my group count, which is five, and they also start from number one. So this is basically the input data that is needed. The other elements that you can find in this setup dialog are there to specify some uh, locations and uh, elements of the plugin which are generated in the background. 
For example, you can specify where the uh, generated presets for your FX or bump color are stored or which timing master should be used for the fade timing. After you've made your adjustments here, hit the generate button and wait some seconds. And that's basically it. You can now select the created layouts in a layout viewer of your choice and directly start working here. If you don't have layout viewers on your screen layout right now, no worries. You can create them by searching for layout viewer and uh, yeah, just generate as many of them as you want and store them in your views later. Then you can select the layout as I have already shown. And if you want uh, to remove the title bar, which uh, looks nice, I think, you can uh, just hit show title bar and deactivate it. And after that, you get this nice clean look. After the initial setup process, it is possible to further modify the color picker. Therefore, simply hit the plugin again. Now you can either customize it further reinstall the entire plugin or uninstall everything. So this means all the layouts and elements uh, in the background will be deleted. As an example, I will now customize the color picker a bit further and for example, add some uh, new presets and remove an existing group. Before I do so, I will quickly create some new color presets, maybe some uh, pastel colors for my fixtures. So I select them all and let's go for uh, pastel red here. Same for yellow, green and uh, blue. After this is done, I switch back to my customize menu, um, go to edit presets and now say add presets and I want to add preset number 11, 12, 13 and 14. So I hit them all. Now they are also gone here in the menu. I can go back and I will also remove my uh, pixel group uh, in the same step. So I go to edit groups, say remove groups and remove my pixel group. After I've made my adjustments in here, I go for apply changes, refresh and exit. When doing this, it takes some time. And afterwards, you will find your updated color picker grid up here with the new color presets. And as you can see, also our group pixel is removed. Since most of the functions in our customized menu are pretty intuitive, I won't go into each and every one of them in this video. But as a last example, I will show you the update appearances function as this can be relevant when working with color wheel fixtures. To show you the issue that can occur here, I have reinstalled my color picker with a new group called color wheel spot. And in this group, I have only color wheel fixtures and I have also created some new presets for them. As you can see, the color grid doesn't look really nice in this scenario. And uh, we have only white icons instead of icons that refer to our preset colors. This is because we do not have RGB values that we can automatically use from those presets to create the icons correctly. Therefore, we have to adjust the appearances for them ourselves. To do so, navigate to an appearance pool and uh, search for the appearances that are used and created by the color picker. By default, the starting point in terms of the pool ID should be 9001. The first appearances in here always have some icons and are used for those elements, for example, in the control menu. The appearances that you should be looking for are the first one which don't have an uh, icon behind it. So they will start here in my case and I have a, a total of six of them, which is correct because this always must match uh, the preset count as those first um, appearances without an icon are relevant for the appearance color of the grid. So what I do next is that I use a swipey command and edit the color of this appearance until it matches my preset color. So let us do an orange here and a yellow there and a green here. Uh, by the way, you can also use this brightness level uh, to control the brightness of the color mix. 
let's do a blue, maybe like that, and a purple, and reduce the brightness again a bit to get the same representation. After we are done here, we can hit the color picker plugin again, go to customize and say update appearances. And as you can see, now we get this uh, beautiful grid back with correct colors and you can also check it here in the appearance section and see that those colors are now uh, distributed along the other uh, required icons or appearances. And that's it for this video. We hope you like our new updated version of the color picker. And for sure, for all of our template show file users out there, we will integrate this color picker v2 in the template show file v2 as soon as possible with the next update. Thanks for your support and stay tuned.